Well, it doesn't so much feel as a return to comedy because comedy's just been happening in my private life the whole time, but just by myself and for free. So now I'm just going to be doing it in front of people for money. Getting paid. Yeah, that's a well, good that's thing. the plan. Yeah. <laughs> um, because as I tell my family all the time, like, you guys get this for free, okay? Um, no, I'm very excited to come back. I miss um, stand up. It's been a long time since I've done a full hour show where you really get to you know, tell a story and spend some quality time with your audience. And if you go on dates and they don't go anywhere, like you don't hear from them, you don't know why. Like you don't know why. And then you get to go home and play a fun game that I like to call, was it my face or my opinions? <gasps> so it's called I'm as surprised as you are. Yes. Is there anything off limits in the show? Is there any sort of sketches that you revisit? Oh no, it's all new. It's all new stuff because my stand-up is always about um, what's going on in my life, which kind of sucks because it makes it hard to do old material. So I have to keep um, doing new stuff. But it's uh, so it's really just about what's going on in, in my life and what's going on in my life. Isn't that shocking? I met a guy, moved house, and had a kid. I know you just saw the whole show. It's that, but padded out with 58 minutes of jokes. Speaking of your career, you have this huge body of work behind you. Glad you said of work at the end of that. Otherwise, oh. that would have been quite yeah. rude. <laughs> Yeah, you have, you've done you've a lot, quite a huge right? one, yeah. You've done a lot. Yeah. Um, Stand-up comic, yep. turned writer, turned actor. You're well known for TV work. Have you been paying attention? Thank God you're here, Rosehaven, Utopia, Love Me. Like, there's a lot there. You told me that you should do practice walks with the pram, with the dog, which is what I was doing, which is fine, except I do look like a mad woman who has <laughs> lost yeah. her baby. <laughs> is out to steal one. <laughs> um, you studied professional writing, drama yeah. and media at university and I read a quote from you from uh, a couple of years ago regarding acting saying, I genuinely, genuinely gave it up as a possibility because I didn't have the talent or dedication. Yep. How do you feel about that comment now when you look back at not your body but your body of I'm work? I'm that quote from when I was at uni and not how good are Maduri Illusion Shakers, which is also something I would have been saying back then. Um, how do I, I still, I stand, I stand by it. It was, it happened organically for me. When I said that I meant I, I, I didn't, as an actor, you have to sell yourself, particularly when you're at university and you're just starting out, you have to go around and you have no uh, reel, you have no show reel, you have no body of work. So you have to go, trust me, I'm good. Mm. And I just couldn't do it. I couldn't bring myself to do it. I didn't feel like I was good enough to do it. Um, so I love that the way that acting came into my career was from stand-up. Mm. So people saw me on stage and went, hey, I think you'd be right for this part. Um, so that was sort of the audition rather than me having to go, trust me, I'll, I'll be good. Um, with all that work that I've just discussed there, you have made um, that transition from stage to screen mm -hmm. look quite easy and quite seamless. Ah, directors. Really? Well, I still remember my one of my first was called Laid on the ABC with the beautiful Alison Bell, and uh, Trent O'Donnell was a director. And I remember him coming up to me and going, "Celia, just less." I'm like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "The camera is right there," and I'm like, "But how will the people know all my feelings?" Because I'd been doing so much stage and sketch stuff, and I was doing huge okay. face and loud voice. He's like, "You've got a mic right there, mm -hmm. and cameras are very close, mm. so just..." Bring it down. You haven't mentioned Rosehaven there. What? Sorry, just a, sorry, just a bit excited. It's like a panic attack, but with joy. Attack. Uh, how, who directed you in that then? Because you. So it was Jonathan Bro mm. mainly, and then Sean Wilson came on board. Who are all excellent, but it's weird with those because Luke McGregor and I wrote it, and mm. we wrote the characters for ourselves. Mm. So that was kind of the step in between stage and screen. Mm. Like it was, it was just us playing sort of silly versions of ourselves. Um, but I love that. That seems like such a long time ago. Five seasons we did of that. Yeah. This really isn't necessary. I need to make sure I'm there for you if you're ever in real danger. Let me throw the ball. Okay. Not over, um. You've become a mum in the last year and a half to your beautiful girl, Eleanor. Eleanor, a year and a half, how, still living at home. Still living at yeah. home, that's outrageous. I know. How um, has motherhood changed the way that you approach your work? I'm more tired. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, made, it, it's changed the way I approach my work in the way that I approach my work less because there is just less time. time. Yeah. Okay. I know. Really obvious question. I get that. But so yeah. what, what about the material? Like, are you going to use her, plunder her or not? Is that an it's is that a, out of bounds area? Oh, no, no, no. In this show, oh no, we don't put photos of her on the internet, mm. not for privacy, just because she's ugly. Um, 
and we're just trying to do her a favour. She doesn't need that in the cloud forever. Um, oh, Eleanor. But poor Eleanor. Um, she's going to get therapy. A lot. Um, I am talking about her in this show because it's more about me becoming a mother. And I, it's so, I've had to cut so much stuff. There's so much to talk about, but I don't want it to be... Just, I could talk for three hours just about the first month of pregnancy. Like, it is... There's just so much. But I won't. I won't. Um, so this show is about meeting her dad and because that's a pretty nutso story in itself and having her. What is that in a nutshell? Is it uh, a, or not a nutshell? Met him and pregnant in two months. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. But online relationships, so I hadn't met in person and Wow. Yeah, yep. That's heartwarming. Yeah, it's pretty gross. <laughs> and encouraging. Yeah. yeah. I okay. mean, it could, it's because it's worked out, it is. It really could have been. I, he lived in Sydney. I remember when I flew to Sydney to meet him for the first time. Uh, we were in love, already talking about having a baby. Just from meeting online? Yep, we'd been online for three months because lockdown yep. stuff. And I remember being on the flight up here and talking to an airline host and was like, I'm so excited, I'm going to meet my boyfriend, he's the love of my life, blah, blah, blah. And because I, I haven't met him before and told her the story. And I just remember her looking at me like, I'm the last person who's going to see you alive. <laughs> Because it's sound mad. I'm like, I'm going to his house and he loves me and we're going to have a baby. And I haven't met him, but it's okay. I've got all my stuff with me. And he told me to bring all my credit cards, which is fine. Um, and, and your bank account details. Yeah. Well, lucky you. Lucky yeah. you. Well, well Celia Pacuola, it's been lovely speaking with you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.